I brought my tissue just in case. Um, I just want to say that um, for 36 years that David and I have coached together, I've been the spokesperson. He's the behind the scenes planner, says the lady note. And so today, this afternoon, I asked him if he wanted to switch places. He said no. He didn't want to do it. I want to read to you something a close friend sent to me once they found out what was going to happen. Um, and it's a quote from Vince Lombardi. And I think it's amazing. And I'd like to share it with you. It says, after the cheers have died down and the stadium is empty, after the headlines have been written, and after you are back in the quiet of your room in the championship, and your ring is placed on the dresser, and all the pomp and fanfare has faded, the enduring things that are left are the dedication to excellence, the dedication to victory, and the dedication to doing with our lives the very best we can to make the world a better place. Dave and I reflected on this today because we have tried to live our life through those words. We have pursued excellence. We have pursued championships. But more than anything, I think we've pursued making the world a better place by sending these women out as better representatives and making a difference in our world. We have tried to lead by example and to show them what it is important to do. And I think one of the proudest things uh, of our career is uh, you know, the initiative of the Power of Pink that we started over 11 years ago and the raising of 1.35 million for disadvantaged women in the West Alabama community. That will be something I will remember from the rest of my life. I want to thank everyone in that first recruiting class because they took a chance on us. Just like Coach Bryant took a chance on a 22-year-old graduate from Slippery Rock State College. The things I will miss the most will be coaching the athletes. Thank you for coming today. And with working with the media. Um, Pat Summit once told me that if you're coaching women's sport, if you aren't willing to market and promote as much as you are to coach and recruit, may you compete in front of no one. And I listened to that. And I remember pushing a lot of you to cover us. I went to Ray Mellick of the Birmingham Post-Herald, and I asked him, how do we get more newspaper coverage? And he said, put people in the seats, and then we'll cover you. And I was like, OK, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work on that. And I, took it as a mission throughout my entire career. I'll never forget in 1997, um, we had our first sellout. It was uh, against the University of Georgia, and there were people scalping tickets <laughs> because some husbands waited too late to buy their little girl's tickets, and it was sold out. And I will never forget that moment. Our fans are amazing, and the support of our medalist club is second to none. There are so many of our support staff here. I can't thank all of you enough for what you've done. You're so important to our program, and you are a part of the championship success that we have had. I feel one of the keys to the success of our program has been um, the stability of our coaching staff. Uh, for 36 years, Dave and I have worked, and other than Dana and Brian, we've only had two other full-time coaches and that was Scott Mackle and Mark Cohen. And I'd like to express my gratitude to them for helping build this program. I did share with Bill, and he mentioned that I wanted this to be a seamless transition. I think the seamless part of it is important to a coaching transition and for us to have continued success, which is the first and foremost of what this university is about. Dana will be a tremendous leader. She will do a great job and be a great head coach. And she already has the best assistant coach with some of the most experience in the country in Brian Michella. I wish you both the best, and I will be there cheering you on.
I appreciate the guidance of Lyle Kane for helping me understand the importance of this decision. And I will never be able to thank Jimmy Robinson enough um, for his wisdom, his guidance, and friendship over the years. And the fact that he saved David's life 18 years ago means a lot. This part is hard. Because <laughs> I want to remember Mal for his love of the university and his recruitment for some of the finest coaches that are here, some of them in this room. These coaches on that hallway over in Foster, they inspire me each and every day. Sincere thanks to President Bonner, Chancellor Wynn, the Board of Trustees for your leadership for this great university. I want to express my appreciation to Marie, Robbins, and to Bill for the transition. It hasn't been easy. Bill is one of the finest leaders I've ever had the privilege to work with, and he has a vision that is second to none. I want to thank David's parents, John and Shirley Cook. They couldn't be here today, but I want you to know they've traveled and missed only two meets in eight years, including UCLA, Oregon, Penn State, you name it, and they drive to every meet. John won't fly. So they are truly our biggest supporters. David and I have been blessed with the unconditional love and support of our daughters, Jesse and Jordan, and our son-in-law, Brett. I have to thank David the most. He is my best friend. Without you, this career <laughs> would not have been possible. He makes me a better person each and every day. And once we get through these surgeries, <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next chapter of our life. This isn't a joyous time for David Dunn because of my, my physical challenges that I have to face, but I have to tell you ladies, this year was the most memorable year of our career. This, Dana, you need to know this, is the best coaching job in the country. Our memories, our friendships, and our love for this great university will last a lifetime. Thank you.